noticed that before. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 amazing small details in movies. The name on the marriage certificate is Arlene Machiavelli. That's a fake. For this list, we're looking at small details in movies that took a lot of effort or thought to conceive, but that probably only true film aficionados actually noticed or enjoyed. Dan Grossman called. Yeah, okay. Twice. Oh, okay. To be clear, we're not looking at bits of trivia or clever references, but little details that contribute to the movies themselves. And just so you know, a spoiler alert is probably in order. You didn't think it was going to be that easy, did you? You know, for a second there? Yeah, I kind of did. Number 10. The bride's name is revealed, Kill Bill Volume 1. One ticket to Tokyo, please. When Quentin Tarantino released his samurai movie about a vengeful bride, everyone wanted to know what her real name was, as she was only referred to as the bride for the whole of the first movie. We've all just been calling her the bride on account of the dress. It wasn't until volume two that we learned her name is Beatrix Kiddo. Marty Catroser? Here. Melanie Harhouse? Here. Beatrix Kiddo? Here. However, if you paused the first flick and took a good look at her boarding pass for her flight to Tokyo, you'd have discovered that her name was clearly revealed one movie early. Not only that, but Bill constantly referred to her as Kiddo, which was seemingly a playful nickname, until we learned the truth. No, Kiddo. This moment. This is me and my most masochistic. Number 9. Boromir's Vambraces, The Lord of the Rings Franchise. I wish the ring had never come to me. I wish none of this had happened. As it truly was a dream project for Peter Jackson, the Lord of the Rings film series is filled with small details, and it was quite obvious that he put all of his effort into making the films as detailed as possible. The battle for Helm's Deep is over. The battle for Middle-earth is about to begin. Some of the best smaller details that are seen throughout are Boromir's Vambraces. Once Boromir, spoiler alert, bites the dust, People. Aragorn takes his vambraces, or wrist armor. He wears them for the remainder of the trilogy, without anyone drawing attention to it. That line was broken. Uh, it has been remade. Number 8. The Defeated Mailman, The Royal Tenenbaums. Here I come. Sometimes the best details are in the background, and it takes a truly keen eye to notice them. What was that? Eli just crashed his car into the front of the house. Such is the case in this comedy drama about a group of child prodigies that return home as adults. Where's my shoe? When Owen Wilson crashes his car into a mailbox, what happens in the background makes the crash seem even more detailed. Dad, they ran over Buckley. What? We rarely think of the repercussions of destroyed items in the movies, but the mailman who has a job to do humorously reminds us. He saved him. Who? Dad, he pulled him out of the way. Clearly defeated and upset, he walks by just out of focus. And those of us who've noticed him make a note to treat our mailman just a little bit better. I need help. So do I. Number 7. John Doe's Diaries, 7. It's more comfortable for you to label me insane. Mental note. On the off chance you ever get to work in Hollywood, be prepared to work very hard if you're on the set of a David Fincher movie. Very true. Very, very true. He may make you do some truly tedious things for very little reward, at least depending on how you look at it. This guy is methodical, exacting, and worst of all, patient. That's what happened on Seven, a movie about a serial killer whose murders are based on the seven deadly sins. Gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, pride, lust, and end it. Meant for the character of John Doe, some production designers wrote and drew pages and pages of insane ramblings and grotesque imagery for weeks in $15,000 worth of old journals. And yet most of it didn't even end up in the final film, aside from the title sequence. You're kidding me. Number 6. 
The spear gun, aliens. Bio readouts are all on the green. Looks like she's alive. This sci-fi action horror about a group of soldiers battling aliens on a desolate planet blew everyone away due to its amazing special effects. Get away from her, you bitch! <laughs> that isn't the only great thing about the Alien sequel, though. Its attention to detail is superb. And there's no better example than the opening scene. While we're amazed by the door-cutting robot, it's the fact that in the second movie, the spear gun Ellen Ripley uses against the alien in the first movie is exactly where she left it, stuck in the door, that really gets us. It's a neat little detail, and one that proved James Cameron knew exactly what he was doing. Most of the time it's true. Number five, Clark Kent and Superman's hair, Superman. Good evening, Miss Lane. Uh, hi! Obviously, when you're a superhero, you'll want to disguise yourself in order to remain anonymous to the general public. Lois, for goodness sake, didn't you hear me knocking? Uh huh. Luckily for Clark Kent, he has just the thing a pair of glasses. Well, let's, uh, push off, shall we? But hold on. As if the glasses didn't fool enough people, there's also a small detail regarding his hair that we're sure a few people noticed. When Christopher Reeve is playing Clark Kent, his hair is parted to the right. But when Clark becomes Superman, Reeve's hair is parted to the left. Sure you don't really mean that, Lois. That's sure to trick anyone who might recognize Kent without his glasses, right? I'm really... Um, I mean, I, I was, uh, at first, really nervous about tonight. Number four, windshield scraping, Fargo. Yeah, it would have been cold out here. Heck yeah. With a plot that follows a man who hires two criminals to kidnap his wife, this neo-noir black comedy sounds dark enough, but it's also sprinkled with hilarious little situations. You're darn tootin'. Anyone from cold, snowy climates will be sure to laugh at Jerry's attempts to scrape the ice off his windshield, only to throw the scraper on the ground in frustration. Damn it! Damn! But it's the way he returns to the scraper, picks it up, and continues on that gets the biggest laugh. And it's the fact that the filmmakers didn't overlook the small details of the climate and how it actually affects people that got it on this list. It's cold, Margie. Watch your step, Margie. Most movies would end the scene at the breakdown, but Fargo shows the hilarious realism of just what needs to be done in a situation like that. Oh, yeah. It's got a front coming in. Yeah, you got that right. Number three. Lone Pine Mall, Back to the Future. Crazy drunk driver. Time travel movies are always tricky, especially regarding changed future timelines and characters. Ah! Ah! This classic, which follows a teenager who has to ensure that his parents get together after he accidentally messes with their meat cute. Dad! is filled with interesting details, but none trumps Lone Pine Mall. Brett, it was great. Everything looks great. Before Marty travels back in time, he meets Doc in the Twin Pines Mall parking lot. I had a revelation, a vision, a picture in my head, a picture of this. When he's in the past, he accidentally destroys a pine tree belonging to Old Man Peabody, the owner of the land the mall is situated on. <laughs> So when he returns, the mall is renamed Lone Pine Mall, all due to his careless blunder. Whoa, this is heavy. Number two, the 2012 London Olympics, Children of Men. Stop! Cease fire! Cease fire! In 2027, women are infertile. Or at least they are in this movie's world. One where Clive Owen has to transport a miraculously pregnant woman to sanctuary. Are you sure this is normal? It shouldn't be this frequent. If you look closely at Owen, you'll see that he's wearing a London 2012 Olympics sweater, which has since become faded. Sid! You're a fascist pig. <laughs> this isn't amazing considering the movie takes place in 2027, 15 years after the London Olympics. But what is amazing is that the movie was released in 2006, six years before London hosted the Games. Now you're going to be there at the beginning. Yeah. I'll be there at the beginning. 
It's an astonishing piece of costuming that showed both the future and the past all at once. How many months? It. It takes nine months. Before we blow your mind with our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Oh, that is unacceptable. What? Best album ever made. Um, well, there's a lot of really cool stuff here. Don't see a wheel or three more wheels. Well, I was just wondering if maybe you're not busy tomorrow night. Yeah. Would you like to come over to my house for dinner and meet my mother? I mean, I can't guarantee you she's going to like you. Customers sitting there with food in their mouths. I don't know what's going on. One minute, they're having a Denver omelet. Next minute, someone's sticking a gun in their face. Number one, twins, The Matrix. The Matrix is a system, Neil. As if The Matrix didn't mess with your mind enough, here is one detail that we're sure you missed. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. When Neo goes into what he thinks is the Matrix with Morpheus, the captain of the Nebuchadnezzar teaches the computer programmer a lesson about agents by distracting him with the woman in the red dress. Were you listening to me, Neo? Or were you looking at the woman in the red dress? I was. Look again. Reason. Like Neo, we can't help but look at her. But in doing so, we miss the fact that all the citizens on the busy street around them are literal copies of each other like a large group of twins out for a stroll. This, this isn't the Matrix. No. It's a fantastic little detail that shows just how random and artificial the Matrix is. If you are not one of us, you are one of them. Do you agree with our list? It's game over, man. It's game over. What's your favorite small detail in a movie? Mom. Oh, I just jammed. Shh. For more detailed top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. How did you find me? I'm the man.